Hi, this is the first episode of Science in Soup, and here I am in Thailand at 12.43 in the midday, or in the States of America, it would be 12.43 in the midnight, or whatever time depending on wherever you are on Earth. But the thing that is different amongst every one of us is time. Wait, but what is time? What do you need the most? I need time to sleep. What do you need the most? Oh. I need time to do tasks. I need time to do homework. Math. For hardworking DP students of KISS International School, time is a very essential resource for them. But how can we help them? Can we make time flows more slowly for them only? We need to talk about relativity more. Even though these three concepts are described in different forms, gravity, Albert Einstein, time, place, and speed are all related as being the same thing in space and time. For example, if we have two race cars, race car A and B, which the race car A travels at 90 km per hour, while race car B travels at 100 km per hour, the race car A will see itself as being still and see the race car be going backwards. While, for the race car B's perspective, the race car B will see itself as being still and will see the race car A going forward. But how does this work? As time and speed are all related, the faster you travel, the faster the time will pass for you. Or in other words, the faster you travel, the less time you will experience. Just as an example, for car B, it will see car A going forward because it experiences more time than car A as time flow more slowly for car B than for car A. And for car A, it is the opposite as the time flow more faster for car A than for car B. So car A experiences a lot less time than car B. So it sees car B as going backwards. Another thing that can affect the time flow is mass. So the best thing to do is visualizing the space-time as the following. So the space-time in our diagram is one centimeter across and to cross it, it will take one second to cross it. Now let's imagine I put a little mass on this space-time, a little neon. The object or the mass will affect the space-time by bending it and making a cavity in it. And in the cavity, the length between each space-time will become greater, while the time taken to cross it will be the same, one second. According to this, the time will flow more slowly because previously in one second we can travel one centimeter but now in one second we can travel 1.5 centimeter and the strange phenomena doesn't stop there as an object gains more speed it will gain more mass too and to accelerate it even more you will need even more powerful force to accelerate it even more and more until the object reaches the mass that mankind cannot accelerate even more or it is impossible for anything to accelerate that object even more but even if we could as we approach the speed of light the object would go boom because the law of physics doesn't allow it to happen the fastest time flow possible is the time flow of the universe itself 
as we eliminate all the factors like mass and speed out. And for object A, the speed of it will affect its time flow and making its time flow more slowly than the universe. And for object B, which has a gravity affecting on it, so the time flow of it is slowing too. But what if we have an object that we accelerate so hard, so fast, that it breaks the law of physics and go beyond the speed of light. The time flow would be so slow that it will start to be boomeranging into the past. So this leads to the question, time travel is possible, isn't it? Just for fun, what if these laws of physics don't exist. What if us that have mass can travel at the speed of light? What would possibly happen to us at that scenario? Physics cannot be applied to this scenario because it's just too bizarre. But something that is even more bizarre than physics can be used to explain this scenario. That is called quantum theory. Quantum theory is something that is used to apply applied to predicting some probabilities at small scales, as small as an atom or an electron. And it is so precise that it can be used to describe something bigger in physics. But someone has taken that into a strange account. Just take a look at this. In quantum physics, many probabilities can happen at an electron or an atom scale. So many probabilities don't come to an existence in a bigger scale. Someone theorized that those probabilities really occurred, but just occurred in our universe. Like these cubes that have six space like normal cubes. So the chance it will go one will occur in one universe, it will go two will occur in another universe, it will go three will occur in another universe, and it will go another thing to go into another universe. So by going into the past, what we are actually doing is we may be going into the past of our neighboring universe or the parallel universe because because as we are trying to change the past we are changing the outcomes and so that means we are going into another universe where that outcomes exist according to this by going to the past we are not changing our horrible past we are changing the past of our twins in the parallel universe, not the past of ours. But still, as we know, time is a very limited resource. Time is limited. Everything is limited. But we can use something that is limited to make something happy. We don't need to be able to go back into the past and change the past to make something good happen to us right now. One thing we can do, we can just do our best on today and make the day that will come later than tomorrow the best as we can make it be. See you next time when you wanna scoop more science.